Hello, welcome to uh, Crafting with Steve, I guess is what I'm going to call it right now. Uh, doing some crafting for tabletop gameplay. Uh, you can also use this if you're wanting to do model making for uh, trains, that kind of stuff. Um, this is part of a program I am putting together uh, for a Dungeons and Dragons group that we're doing with the library. It was funded with a grant from the Panhandle Library Access Network. Um, and in this first little episode of crafting, we are going to be do, uh, talking about trees. Trees in a tabletop role-playing game, uh, when you are putting them out, is something quick and simple that you can put together on the table to bring some depth and life into the gaming session. Um, there are a few different ways that you can do it. Um, what we have here is a Battlefield series tree kit. Uh, Woodland Scenics also makes something of this nature. It is basically a tree armature that you can, uh, this particular one is a full complete set and we'll just pop it open here and I'll show you kind of what you're dealing with. So, when I say tree armature, this is what I'm kind of talking about. It is the, the structure support of a tree. Yeah, you've got the, the trunk, you've got the branches coming up. We've got the uh, bases that these trees would be glued onto. Uh, this package comes with a, a couple variety. It looks like three trees that could be made here. Um, they give you some instructions here on how to do it and what you will need. Um, this particular one comes with some basing details. Uh, this package here is the foliage, the tree leaves that you would be, you'll put some glue onto these particular item, uh, these particular limbs roll it in the foliage, it'll come out. Uh, you'll glue it there. We've got some, uh, there's the bases, so you'll plop these bases right into there, glue those on. And these basing details are what adds a little bit of life to the base of the floor, be it fallen tree trunks, as you can see here, uh, some grass, some rocks, some pebbles, and then this is ground flocking, which is basically used as grass along these, these particular bases to give a kind of natural scenic look. Uh, these are all fun and easy to use. They are a little on the expensive side um, for what you sometimes when you can do something that is just as quick and easy as that on your own. Uh, using stuff that I've mostly gotten from like a dollar store. Uh, in this case, what I'm talking about, we'll be making some pine trees, some uh, those type. And what I'm using are simple wooden dowels a little cocoa fiber planter from that you could find in most garden stores. Um, some Elmer's glue. I've got the, the tree foliage that we could use on this, but we're not going to. Uh, we're going to go in a, a different direction with it. Um, I've got some loose ones and some brown paint that we can work with. Uh, so what I'm going to start us off with here basically is we're going to pop open these and we're going to make some trunks. In this case what I'm using is a wooden round dowel. Um, you can also use uh, barbecue, score, uh, barbecue skewers for this as well. The advantage of the barbecue skewer is in this case you can see that these come with, with flat ends and that will make it a little bit difficult to, to push the, the cocoa fiber down on it. So I'm going to just put a little bit of a point on it here real quick. And I always want to cut away from yourself. And you can see all I've really done is just put a little bit of a, a point. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. You can just put a little point which is going to make it easier when I start cutting these slices on to kind of push that through and push it down because otherwise it's, it's flat end pushing in and that's just not doing us any good. This is just a wooden dowel. It's essentially a pencil. It's a wooden pencil. So if you happen to have just a, a uh, what the heck you call these things, pencil sharpener, <laughs> a pencil sharpener handy. And I've got two different sizes, and this is a smaller dowel. It fits right there in that second, in that little small end. It starts off blunt, boop, and it's a little bit safer, a little bit quicker, and. Voila, we're back to that point that we could do the same way and, you know, didn't have to have an open blade to, to hack off a finger or three like I did last time. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is with this particular skewer, I'm going to just take some brown modeling paint, in this case, just simple apple barrel stuff that I got from, from Walmart, nothing fancy. There are fancy paints out there, but when you're doing this kind of stuff, it, it's unless you're working in high detail and it's showing off, the simple stuff will work. What I'm going to do is just put a little touch there. There we go. That's a little more than I'm ever going to need. And get some paintbrush out here. Get it a little wet. I'm going to work with some dilute to it. And then all I'm going to do is just kind of paint up the trunk here to kind of give it some brown so that when we put our green on it, there's some any places where the you can see through the fiber will be trunky looking as opposed to the less natural wood area and it's you, I know you're thinking why are you painting wood to look like wood well trees don't look like wooden dowels do they and that would be the main reason here going to do is I've got a piece of foam over here that we will stick this particular little item in. As you can see what I've done is just taken wooden dowel, painted a little bit of brown to kind of give it like a, a woodland look and then we are just going to put this over to the side here. So now that I've got it all painted up what I'm going to do is just grab a piece of foam here to use as a drying board just kind of stick it in there and that way the the skewer itself can can dry out let the paint dry before we start putting the cocoa fiber on it and normally what I'll do is I'll do a couple of these at a time that way I can have a few different trees drying and and ready to go at any given moment because one tree one tree is a tree multiple trees we have suddenly a forest on different pieces and that's kind of the idea that we're going for so what I have here, as I mentioned before, it's a coconut fiber planting bowl. Normally these would be in the garden section. You kind of put these in, you put a plant in, and it stores water, what have you. Um, in this case, what I'm going to use it for is to make some trees. And how I'm going to do that is kind of like this. What I'm doing is I'm just cutting out a little strip of it here. Kind of put that to the side for the moment. And these things kind of unfold and what have you. And I'm going to cut that again here in the center so I can have a couple different layers. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these particular dowels and we're going to cut some circles and then we're going to kind of push them down and fluff them out and it'll kind of give us a, a little bit of a layered effect to kind of give a pine like tree a spruce sort of so to speak I guess is, is what that particular tree is uh, so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to cut them into to little squares and you're going well why squares because I'm going to cut them into circles after that but always start with squares and I'm going to kind of do it so that as they go up, they get slightly smaller. So we're just gonna do a little bit of rounding here. It doesn't have to be exact, cause hey, what tree have you ever seen that is perfectly round, right? So that's what we're doing here. Just simple cuts, nothing big, nothing fancy. Boop, just to kind of give it a a shape. And we'll do a few more of those. So what we have now is we've given this time to dry and in the meantime I cut a few more of these 
coconut fibers out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some good old all-purpose white glue. There we go. I'm going to just run it along and then I'm going to get my hands dirty. Just kind of smeared in there. And had I thought about it, I'd wear gloves on this because the glue and the coconut fiber, if I'm using the same hand, is definitely going to stick all over it. So, so we kind of got a, a glue stick there. And I'm going to start at the bottom and kind of work my way to the top. We're going to See, this is why I wanted, wanted that kind of pointy area because it is working itself through this particular fiber, he says. There we go. And we're just kind of bringing it down. And then I'm going to work on the next one here, and we're going to do this in a couple different layers. And as you kind of see, we're kind of layering our ways up this particular tree to kind of create some branches and what. And we will go in here and spread those, spread those branches out some. And here, what you'll see is some of these fibers will have some larger pieces in them that you can, coconut shell, so to speak. To need to uh, break out a little bit. And we're just gonna put some more. One can never have too much glue because the more glue you have, the more it's gonna stay in place. Actually, I'm gonna break this one up a little bit because it's folded over. And more than anything, I'm showing you this to show you that there will be mistakes made. I will make many of them. And hopefully you'll learn from what I'm doing to not make the mistakes that I'm doing on, on yourself. But we also learn from those mistakes as we kind of go along. So you kind of see how we're building this tree higher and higher, and I think I will have just enough circles cut to, to get right toward the top. Finally, what I'm going to do here, after I get some of these off my hands, is I'm going to, one of the triangles I cut out here, I'm going to kind of spread it out and then just kind of put, well, I'm going to put some more glue on that first, right there on the, on the tip. Now, I don't know if you can see the tip. I might need to bring it forward here. So right there on the, on the very tip top of it, what I'm doing is just taking one of the little triangles I, I cut out to when I was doing my circle, and I'm just going to kind of bring that to the top. And so what we have is our base tree, 
and I'm going to come back and I'm going to shape it up just a little bit where I, I don't like the, the angles or what have you. And then we will go to the next step of it. So, uh, kind of just trimming some right through there. Just kind of pruning it up a little bit, just kind of giving it whatever kind of tree shape I want to give it. Just trying to smooth it out because, you know, was it Emerson that said, uh, I will never see a poem as lovely as a tree? He was obviously talking about this particular one right here. What we've done, we've kind of let it dry now some, and what we have is a thick kind of tree realm base. And this is going to be a very simplistic looking tree. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to hit it with some, uh, some green spray paint, and so it'll be kind of thicker and not spread out. But that's not just, that's, that's a quick and easy way to do it, but there are other ways to kind of do this as well, and I've, while we were doing this, waiting for that dry, I kind of put together another one over here. And you can see this one is more spread out compared to this one. And all I've essentially done is instead of taking big thick layers here like I have here, so these fibers right here, they, the, the different layers have different layers in them that you can break apart. And that's essentially what I've done with this one. Instead of having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thick layers, I just took one of one of these thicker ones, broke it apart some, then trimmed it down to give a successive smaller and smaller layer. So on this one, we're going to just go straight green. And on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a dark brown. Uh, I think the color is called espresso if I want to get 100% technical. And what I'm going to do from there is with the espresso, it's going to give it kind of a, a, a deep look and then I will spray it with some spray adhesive and we're going to actually add some coarse turf terrain to it to kind of give it more of a, a tree, an actual tree-like look. So we're going to see two different styles to kind of go just the different ways you can do things. And I'm going to do short, quick bursts. And we'll just hit it with a, a couple different layers here. So it's just quick, short bursts. And we're trying to get all those little areas. And I'm, you'll notice I've got a glove so that way I can get a little bit more careless with it and not come away with green fingers. And I want to get the underside too. We're just trying to get a fairly complete coating on it. And see if I've missed any spots. Yep, right there. And I think we're going to call that one green. So what I'm going to do with this one, this is the one that was more spread out to kind of give it more of a a uh, richer, denser look, more natural tree look. I'm just going to touch it with the uh, espresso brown that I was talking about earlier. And again, short, quick bursts, sweeping bursts. And I'm trying to stay about six or so inches away from, from my project here. And again, see, this is why I'm wearing gloves right there so I don't get it all over my fingers because I can get careless. And again, we're touching on all sides of this. And I think I've got that one more or less completely covered he says as he sprays it down a little bit more but kind of gives it that that deep deep brown look that a tree branch would have if it was in the shade now that we have it in that espresso brown what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to prep it for the application of the, the, the foliage. And I'm just taking a spray adhesive and I'm going to hose this down so it's nice and sticky. Then we're going to give it a little bit of time to cure and then we're going to roll it. And you can see it will go on there nice and white. So you can see where you have gotten it. And we're just going to give it a firm application. Here we have what I'm going to end up putting onto the tree here. This is a, a woodland scenic style bushes um, terrain and you can kind of see that on a, on a smaller scale this can be used for trees but also use it as hedges or or what whatever you kind of shrubs around the base of the trees to kind of give it and I'll zoom in there you can kind of see what it looks like. This is just a a foam style product that ha I've broken up a little bit to make it a little bit more tree friendly because I don't do a lot of shrubs myself. So I've given this just a few minutes to, to kind of get some tackiness to it and as I said before I'm just going to kind of touch in to here and get it started and as you can see this is a little bit messy so having that newspaper down serves a little bit of two purposes here. A it's going to catch all the stuff so it's easier for cleanup but it also lets me reuse it. So stuff that I drop on the thing I will put back in here so it's not just wasting material. And I'm putting it down kind of with a firm hand because I want it to stick nice and I'm just looking for, for patches of areas that I want to touch up on and if things are a little bare in spots that's fine and I don't know if I mentioned it earlier with the the spraying of all this a you want to wear a mask or a to kind of prevent the fumes from getting in it or in a well ventilated area outside preferably that way you're not just killing brain cells and we're just about where I want it to be I think and it's all just what you want to deal with what you want it to look like and you can see I've made a little bit of a mess and I'm just going to kind of give it a shake for see the loose ones and if there's things that are dangling I'm going to prune this off a little bit just to kind of give it that look I want and I'm going to just press in and you kind of you see how this is looking more like a tree now and just one more shake and one last final trick that I like to do with it, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a, a natural look to it, is I'll take a different highlighted kind of color. In this case, this is going to be a blended, but it's, it's more of a yellow color is, is what I'm trying to get at. And what that's going to simulate is the light hitting different leaves or, or needles in this case. But I'm just going to sprinkle just like this. And you can kind of see where it's highlighting different areas and just a touch to whatever I'm looking for and then once I'm where I want it to be we're gonna seal it and so as I said what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this newspaper I'm just gonna shake my, my foliage back in there and some of those little leaves will get in there and that's okay. I'm not going to get them all in there but just enough and that way I have more stuff to reuse and there's some coconut fiber in there that I'll pull out as I need to but it's reusable because you want to keep you want to keep your expenses as much as down as much as you want to. So what we have here is the finished tree. Um, what I am going to do next is the, the terrain itself is still, you can see, if I can quit my hand from shaking, that it's still sort of flexible. And so if I start picking at it, that's going to come off, and I want to kind of seal it to kind of give it more of a, uh, 
to, to kind of make sure that it's all held together a little better. So I'm just taking a, 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 clear, pla a, a clear matte sealant and I'm just gonna touch on this to kind of give it a coating and help it stay into place. And this will, will seal clear, so it's a little bit wet right now, but once it is finished, it will definitely not be as, as wet looking. So what we have here is the two different styles of trees. Obviously this one is, is more of just a, a quick and easy one, doesn't take as much time. This one obviously, these two are obviously a little bit more detailed, just depends on what you want to go with. We're not looking for perfection in all any of these, we're just looking for fun, just to kind of spread out across the table to kind of give some depth to the scenery for the miniatures and going from there. Now that we're finished, what we're going to do next week is I'm going to tell you what to kind of do with, now that we've got our trees made, what we're going to do with them and how to base them so that you will be a critical threat at your table. Until then, keep crafting. <laughs>